I love the way that these films travel. We get to see the Wizarding World in all these different incarnations. You wander over through sets of Bataan, onto the wastes of the mountains of China, onto the streets of New York and Berlin. We've seen the French ministry, we've seen the Makuza, we've seen the UK ministry, and now we see the German ministry. Berlin. Wonderful. Berlin in 1932. Um, wonderfully atmospheric trams. Lovely sort of wonderful art deco kind of architecture. Dirty snow on the streets. When we arrive in Berlin, Newt, Theseus and Lally take Jacob through this wall. I always wondered what it would be like if we made going through the wall rather than just a pop and a flash a little bit more physical. We've seen a lot of walking through walls, the platform 93 quarters, um, which was often just done as like a wipe. And here, when people walk through the walls, the actual bricks move and separate and, and it sucks them in. <clears throat> and then we're on the wizarding side of Berlin. The Ministry of Magic in Berlin was one of the most challenging sets because it was just massive. I used to look at a model that we were doing uh, for a set and I'd always go, can we make it a bit bigger? I just need that set to be a bit bigger. And when I came to work on this one, I'd go, are we going to make it that big? <laughs> it's kind of enormous. The German ministry is unlike any of the ministries so far that we've had. The main German ministry building which is heavily influenced by the German architecture of the 1930s. Our Grand Hall is inspired by some of the large interiors of the Reichstag. You come into the Grand Hall and the Grand Hall is 100 metres long and it is 20 metres high. And there are chandeliers from the ceiling which are about 4 metres big. There were these massive paintings. They were so beautiful and I would say, wow, those sill screens and they said no they were painted those paintings uh, where there are angels and, and, and the madonna holding jesus and stuff instead of angels these were wizards with wands in their hands there's so much love in all these details going into berlin was a great opportunity to really sort of throw ourselves into art deco design because they were masters of it in in germany in that period of looking at reference material of Berlin in the 30s, it was very spare. We didn't end up putting as much stuff inside the ministry as we might have done, say, in the chaos of Mercusa. There's this sort of aspect that there's no privacy, everything's known, every bit of information is shared. We tried to do it as a, a real Bauhaus set. We created these really over-the-top, exaggerated listening devices. We gave them the period feel, but they also had the magical twist, you so say, it's quite fun. The bird is also a very strong element in insignias of organisations, and it kind of has an imperial quality to it, which we felt we needed to, to bring to this. The whole uh, insignia feels like the epitome of, sort of deco design. The Mina Lima team came up with the designs, the physical designs for all the physical banners and also gave us designs for the magical ones. David wanted, you know, the Grindelwald lot to set fire to a, to a Santos banner. It really does give us an epic quality to those scenes. These different worlds, different countries, they've all been constructed and so there's a sense of old style filmmaking when the Hollywood studios would build you know streets and small towns the level of skill is is just extraordinary what these guys do is phenomenal and every time we step onto a set it's like entering into the real world and that's part of the joy of doing these films is the level of detail it's really beautiful and adds to the magic